Galatians 3.20, right? The text that started this whole series 24 videos ago, if you include that one. Or don't include that one, right? It'll be 25 with all of them. To date, we have a lot more. Let's just take a look. There's no mediator where only one person is concerned. But God is only one. Let's look at Galatians 3.20 in the Bible Hub. We're almost done, everyone. I think it's pretty clear, don't you? We haven't even read texts like 1 Corinthians 8.6 that identify the one God explicitly as the Father. We're just looking at the terms for face and person. There are numerous other examples I could... I mean, I'd, I'd be here all night. I just picked the ones I thought would highlight this very clear and consistent teaching the most. There's like tens or even hundreds more that show the same thing. And so again, other than plurals of majesty or non-numerical plurals, which are proven by the corresponding translation in Greek and even the modern translations, which know that too. And I have a whole series going on about the plurals in Hebrew. So just take a look at those videos if you have any questions about those plural forms. That's a special category of Hebrew plurals that is not numerical. The Trinitarians just lie and aren't even consistent about it being that, like with Elohim. If it's an actual plural, it means gods, not multiple persons in one God. Right? They literally want us to have a plural understanding of God but not have a plurality of gods, right? They want a plurality of a whole different term, pane. They want Elohim to be panim for one L-O-L, right? One, if, if, if we're going to take it in the singular. But that's just, again, their ridiculousness. Elohim is frequently used in that majestic sense, translated by singular and Septuagint all the time. And if it were a plural numerically, not majestically, it would mean God's contradicting the Trinity. So this is, it gets to a point where the Trinitarians are just so deep in their tradition. It's, we're gonna, you, you, you will constantly be repeating yourself as we're finding out now with the Collapsagon, right? <laughs> the monument to false doctrine and heresies, in particular as promoted by Sam Shamoon, right? The ultimate heretic, right? The modern day, Athanasius in terms of his insanity and spiritual retardedness, right? And he's a special case. We've documented that. He's now thinking he can reconcile Satan to God because he doesn't understand to Ponta in Colossians 1, 15 and 17. So he totally collapses in verse 18 and verse 20. And I think there's another, another motive here. I think Sam has crossed over. I think we've shown that, in my opinion. So he's sort of just, in, it seems, reaching out to uh, his side there in Colossians 1.20. Maybe looking out for the devil, uh, given his condition. <laughs> but Sam, I'd, I'd encourage you to stop that and to uh, submit yourself. Back to, for, start with your Trinitarians. They, they, they'll be the best place for you right now, probably, so they can try to manage you. Although they unleashed you and created you, so and maybe not. Right? I don't know. You're on your own, Sam. We've done everything we can. Galatians 3.20. We just read it in WT. I've done a whole video on it. The first video of this series. Ha de mesites henas uk estin. Ha de theas heis estin. Right? But the mediator, <laughs> it says, but the mediator is not one, right? Let's go back. Uh, but the mediator one not is, but God one is. So if we compare that, 
with their multiple translations to see how the Trinitarian Bibles render it. Galatians 3.20. It says, so if we look at uh, NIV, a mediator implies more than one party. So when it says a mediator, not one is. It's saying if, if there's a mediator, then there has to be more than one. A mediator requires more than one person. A mediator, not one, is. But God is one. Go back to the Greek. It's actually right across here. Ha de, but the mediator, ha de mesites, henos uk estin. Not one is. Ha de theos, but the God is one. So look at the way the NIV renders that. It's basically the same. It, it, when it says the mediator, not one is, NIV says that a mediator implies more than one person, more than one party. Why wouldn't God imply that, Trinitarians? It not only explicitly says, right after saying a mediator is not one, because it requires another person to be there. Well, first of all, again, why wouldn't it say that about God? Why wouldn't it say, Ha Theos, Henos uk estin, right here. But the God one not is, meaning like NIV's translation, God implies more than one person. I know God is one according to Deuteronomy six four. I quoted it. That's my whole point. He's one person. That's exactly what it says in the second part of this verse. The God is one. In direct contrast to a mediator not being one. There has to be another person there. And this other person who he's talking about, the mediator, is Jesus. So if God is multipersonal and a mediator requires more than one person, how is it that God is used as one here in contrast to the mediator? Because the God and the mediator here are two of your persons. How is it possible that God couldn't imply the same thing that mediator implies if he's multipersonal? And in fact, his multipersonality includes both of these individuals, the father and son, in terms of the mediation that's being discussed. A mediator, one not is. A mediator implies more than one party, NIV. But God is one. God does not imply more than one party, therefore. That's the contrast. It's what I explained to you all in the first episode, the Trinitarians, right? But they went crazy. Do you understand it now? Is this a little easier for you, Trinitarians? A mediator implies more than one person. Because you can't mediate without another person. God does not imply more than one person, which is explicitly stated by the contrast. It's just translated differently by NIV because they don't want to contradict the Trinity. Right? It should be a mediator implies more than one party. 
but God does not imply more than one party if they want to be consistent, right? Because the first part is henos uk estin. One not is. A mediator isn't one. It's got to be someone else there. But God is one. Doesn't have to be anyone else there. Just him. And it's talking about him in contrast to the mediator who is, in your view, Trinitarians, another person of this same God. So it would have to imply more than one party if your view is correct. It's over. I told everybody this in the first episode of this series. Maybe that's why they kept interrupting me all the time, right? <laughs> Especially in part two, but even in part one. It's so obvious right here, everybody. The game, it's, it's over. It's been over for so long. <laughs> I mean... In 1 Corinthians 8, 6, right? All the texts we've talked about. But that's why I started this series with this text. It's so incredibly powerful and destroys the Trinity as a biblical concept. A mediator implies more than one party. But God does not. And the, the God who does not imply more than one party is distinct from the mediator here, which according to Galatians 1, is not a man. I know 1 Timothy 2.5 says one mediator between God and man, a man, Jesus. The immediate surrounding context refers to him giving his life as a man. That's why. Galatians 1, multiple times, explicitly states God received, uh, Paul received his appointment in Revelation, not from a man, but from Jesus. Not from something human, but from Jesus. So, that is incorrect. And I did a whole video on 1 Timothy 2.5 and on Galatians 3.20. This couldn't be more against the idea that God is multipersonal. It is explicit in making clear that God is not multipersonal. Otherwise, he could be. He could be the mediator and a party. He could be the God and the mediator. But according to this, he can't. That's the whole point of contrasting him with the mediator. The mediator, there has to be someone else. With God, there doesn't. So he's one. In contrast to the mediator. Meaning he's one person in that mediation arrangement. If he was more than one person, there'd be no point in making a contrast with the mediator that implies more than one person. Because God would then imply more than one person. And what's the contrast there for? So the mediator implies more than one party. And God implies more than one party. Well, then what's what are you saying? You're not saying anything. Right? You're just saying they're the same. They both imply more than one party. That's not what he's saying, though, is it? He's saying one implies more than one party and the other one does not and is contrasted directly with another member of the alleged so-called Trinity. So it's doubly against the Trinity by separating the mediator from God, who is one person. Whereas if Jesus was also a person of God, there'd be no need for that separation, and the mediation could imply more than one person as part of the Godhead.